Have you ever wondered what goes into your favorite brand's digital marketing strategy? I'm Tara, the founder of TJ Creative Agency. And I'm Audrey, the creative marketing director of TJ Creative Agency. Whether you're an influencer, a business owner, a content creator, or just an overall creative person, we'll teach you how to create the perfect social media strategy and build your brand online. Welcome back to Social Sessions, you guys. Tara and I are here together. I feel like it's actually been... I'd say, to be honest, close to two months since the two of us have been on an episode together. Um, And we are going to be talking about ROI in the social media industry. If you work in social media or even if you don't, this is one of the biggest things that people ask on our discovery calls or things I get asked about in Mm -hmm. like coaching calls is essentially people saying, I'm putting all of this time into my social media or... I'm paying someone to do my social media. How do I know if it's working at all? So we are going to kind of break that down for you. But you guys know the drill before we get into that. A little social media news. I was just telling Tara as I was kind of going through news, like updates, everything is threads related. If you are looking to me to explain threads to you, this is not the episode. Go to the last episode because I did talk about threads in the last episode. Um, But I'm not going to do it again. So... I want to kind of do a quick glance over of the TikTok shop feed. They're testing it with select users, so not everybody has the access to it right now. But now there's going to be everybody knows the following and for you page. Now there's a shop page. I think they are testing like a ton of different pages because I just told Tara I had a STEM page. I think for a while people had a Taylor Swift Eras Tour page. Like there was just, I don't know how they are deciding this. My STEM page is gone, but I knew a few other people who got that page and they're just like kind of throwing stuff up there. So now there's a shop page. I kind of liked the STEM page for like, honestly, it was actually pretty interesting. Some of the things that I learned on there, I feel like it was good for uh, the younger generation. If, if we had something like that, it was constantly like educating them. Yeah, that's what I had. That's what I heard some other people talk about on a podcast. They were like, you know, people are learning. And they brought it up that, like, other countries, some of the kids are learning on TikTok. And the U.S., like, our kids are learning how to do, like, dances and make slime. Yeah. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. But they can sell it. different. Cool. Yeah. Just different stuff. Make anyway, so, yeah, now they're adding the shop page. They – we talked about a while ago that they were working on a nearby feed – which I guess they are still working at the kinks on. I think we literally talked about that maybe in like November of last year. Like it was a long time ago that we talked about that. Um, so that's kind of what to expect with TikTok um, coming soon. Yeah. That's kind of what they're working on. Uh, I so. explored I explored the shop page because I added it uh, for a client and – Obviously, we were trying to find things that like fit into his niche Um, and there wasn't a whole lot to choose from, but it's almost like it's like a basic Amazon store and you pick whatever falls into like your niche as a business or whatever you suggest, but it didn't look like unique. Does that make sense? Like everybody gets to pick from these things to put in their shop. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it just doesn't feel like TikTok is like the interface to shop. And maybe yeah. that's also a me situation. I don't really like shopping on my phone at all. I um, think they took I think they maybe took like TikTok made me buy it too seriously and we're like, well, we're, we're going to have our own store here. Yeah, I maybe like the Amazon shop page they were seeing how much Amazon was making. I don't know. Like maybe they'll find a way to make it work, but it does kind of just feel like not the right platform to do that but who knows maybe i'll be proven wrong it would be nice for like sorry i'm gonna continue on this oh go ahead (laughs) i also think for like companies like lace hair or something if it was available and you could watch a video and directly shop or just swipe over to the shop and buy whatever was in the video it would be easy i think it would be nice but i think it has you know a little bit to get there Yeah, I have to try and remind myself that not everybody works like how I do. Like Instagram shop, never bought anything off of Instagram, hardly ever swipe up on anything. Like I honestly will probably Google the brand and buy it through that. But I've never bought anything through Instagram because I just am like, it's 
I don't I know bought, why it's in, incredibly annoying to me. I bought a hat. I just and like I'll look it up, or sometimes like I'll look at the website and be like, "What else do you guys offer?" But yeah. I never buy it through Instagram. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, now before we jump into talking about ROIs and return on social media, you guys already know what I'm going to say because I tell you it every week, but rate and review the podcast, please. Would love it if you did that. Um, that's it. Rate and review the podcast. Yes. Now, okay. So now I want to kind of start this by defining exactly what ROI is. And its relevance within social media marketing. So ROI, if you don't know, stands for return on investment. And a lot of times, like outside of the social media world, ROI typically refers to the money that you make back from an investment that you've made. Um, In social media, I think it might be a little bit different. Not always. I mean, at the end of the day, an ROI is an ROI. It's the profit that you're making back from your investment, right? That's really why everybody makes any marketing decisions or any investments. So that's not different, but there are some different ways and diff- more so different stages within social media that we are going to talk about in a little bit. Um, how to explain ROI in financial terms um, is basically taking the net profit that you make, divide that by the initial investment and multiply that by 100. That's how you're going to get the number that you're looking for. That's what the ROI is. It's very simple. Um, so let's say you spent a hundred dollars or you made a hundred dollars. Your net investment was 50. You're going to take that two times a hundred. That's your ROI. But like I said, ROI and social media marketing, it can be determined by profit. And at the end of the day, that's probably what a lot of your clients want is to it to be determined by profit. And that makes sense because it's like a traditional business analytic. It's a traditional business measurement. So it makes sense that they want that for social media because marketing is part of their business. But there are (laughs) other ways to measure their return outside of finances. So how to do that? I'm going to take a few steps back so we know what we're trying to do. We're trying to discover the ROI, but there's a few things you need to do before you can even start, you know, with these measurements, with these analytics. First, the very first thing you need to do is set your goals. We've talked about this a million times. If you want a really in-depth episode about this, we definitely have episodes about goal setting. We just had a blog post go up about it. So we got a lot of resources about that. But essentially, absolutely nothing can get done if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish on social media. It will be impossible to measure any sort of return without knowing what you're trying to achieve. So that's your very first thing, right? Second thing you need to do is make an actionable plan. You need to create a strategy that is specific to you or your client's goals. Again, it's impossible to get anywhere without a strategy. You're kind of just shooting in the dark. It doesn't make any sense. You're actually wasting your time. I made a video about this the other day. If you don't have a strategy, you're absolutely wasting your time. You're wasting your client's time. You need a strategy. Yes. So what to consider when you are creating a strategy? Like I said, goals, obviously, that's the first thing. You need to consider who your target audience is, what their pain points are, what your competitors are doing, what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right. You need to analyze your own account. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Where do you have room for opportunity? Y'all know it. If you went to college, you know the SWOT the SWOT analysis. You got to get that done. You got to get the SWOT analysis done. It actually does come into play outside of the college classroom. So anyways, those are just some things that you definitely need to take into account when creating this strategy. And then last thing you need to do before you are able to actually start measuring any sort of ROI is you need to have measurable statistics. Your goals don't mean anything if you can't measure them. You cannot measure vibes. You cannot measure like, oh, I think they like this. Like that's not measurable. You need numbers. That's actually what measuring means is it's quantitative. So different measurable statistics could be like you can look to how many people signed up for your newsletter, how many people signed up for a trial of your product, how many people purchased things, how many contact inquiries did you get, how many DMs did you get asking about your product or your service. Those are all kind of measurable things, right? You can look to that and be like, I had 15 people sign up for my newsletter this week. 
that's great. That's whatever X amount percentage increase. These are all measurable things. So now that we have all of that in place, now you can actually start to measure any sort of return. So obviously it is dependent on your goals. What kind of return you're looking to get is dependent on your goals. So for example, if your goal is to increase brand awareness and to increase visibility, then the return that you're looking at is probably going to be the reach and the impressions. How many people, like how many new accounts are you reaching with your content? How many new faces are you reaching with your content? Because that's increasing your visibility, right? If that's your main goal, you're paying someone or you're paying with your time, that's your investment, right? Your money and your time. If you are investing for the sole sake of increasing brand awareness or increasing visibility, those are some of the things that you can look to for a return, right? Yep. Number two, engagement metrics. If your main goal is to maintain retention, if your main goal is to create trust and create a stronger relationship or create a community with your audience, then engagement is really going to be something that you look to. Comment, shares, retweets, anything like that. That's your user engagement. That's really going to, again, that's huge for retention. And I think people gloss over that all the time. Your engagement is heavily tied into your retention. So again, that could be a return. If the retention, if the community, if the relationship is really what you're investing into. Mm -hmm. Lastly is really the conversions and sales. And this is what I'm guessing most of you are looking for slash most of your clients are looking for. Most people want conversions. They want sales. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because if you are in marketing or you know anything about marketing, you, you know about the buyer's journey. That's probably one of the first things they teach you about marketing is the buyer's journey. You're not just going to see an ad. You're not going to see a product once and buy it immediately. Most of us don't do that. And I've really preached this a million times on this podcast. You're probably not going to see something once and buy it. So the buyer's journey is really the awareness. That's going to be your first one. We've talked about this before as well. It's going to be awareness. You have to find out about the product. Then it's going to be consideration. You have to learn about the product. You have to learn why this company specifically. You look into things like the before and afters. You looked into their case studies. You look into this company's track record. You look into like, is this actually going to solve the problem that I need it to solve? You're really looking into a lot of stuff. And for some services, if it's a big enough service, this consideration phase also requires like saving money for whatever it is. Like, I mean, this can go... This can go so broad. This can go, this whole marketing uh, buyer's journey situation applies to a bar of soap just as easily as it applies to someone booking a stay at a hotel. Completely different things. The journey is the same. So you have to realize that your your customers or your ideal customers are going to go through this consideration phase. Why you? Is it going to do what they need it to do? Is, is the pricing right for them? Does it make sense? Is it worth the price that you're asking? Everything like that. And then finally, you're going to get to the conversion phase, which is really what you're going to see in that conversion and sales, if that's your goal. That's the only place you're, you're really going to see the sales numbers, where you're going to be able to find the traditional ROI as it refers to like business typically. So I bring up the buyer's journey and I say all of this because there's different ways that you can measure kind of where your audience is in the buyer's journey. So if you are putting a ton of money and time, if that's your investment, if you are investing into conversions, that's your main goal. There's Mm -hmm. a few different things you can look to, to see if you're investment is making a return. It might not be, obviously I'm rambling, but obviously the return is the money. It's always going to be the money. The return is always going to be the money, but there's different analytics and different measurements you can look to, to see if you're in the right direction. That being website clicks is a great one. Website traffic, head into your Google analytics, see where that traffic is coming from. If it's coming from social media, then you knew, then you know that you're doing something right. Website address, especially if you are a service-based product, that really tells you that people are interested and they want to see where you're at. They're interested in booking with you. They're doing a little bit of research. They're in that consideration phase. 
look to your DMs if you're getting more people interested, if you're getting more questions, Mm -hmm. um, more inquiries, things like that. Those are all, like I said, they're not the exact return that your client is looking for, but it's indication that the return is on its way. Yes, that's the perfect way to put it. So that's really the breakdown. This was really short, but Tara, do you have anything to add in on on the ROI? No, of, of I love media? that you really broke it down and simplified it because that's really what it is. I think as social media managers, we get a lot of hassle um, trying to prove this metric or trying to prove these things to our clients. And so the way that Audrey just broke that down for you, there's ways to to prove your worth and to prove it's working um, by just looking at the multiple, you know, areas. It's not always as much as everybody, we have a goal, you know, in the beginning of onboarding a client, we do do a questionnaire that asks a lot of their goals and every single client's going to answer with conversion. So that's just something you're going to have to get used to, but also just enlightening them and teaching them about the other metrics, because I think it's not that they don't value them. They just don't understand them. And so if you can explain it the way Audrey did about how this is, these are all indications that this is going somewhere or that this is working, um, I think they'll respond a lot better. Yeah, exactly. Um, It's a little bit tougher just because it's not like A equals B. It's not like a straight equation to figure it out. There's different steps to the journey. Yeah. And depending on your product, the conversion or the consideration phase might be much longer, right? Like if you were just selling a face wash at Target, there's a chance that people are going to, the consideration phase might be much lower because the barrier to entry, the price point might only be $15. And most people, I shouldn't speak for most people, but a lot of people have $15 to spare versus if your price is like over $100, they might be a little bit more hesitant to to determine if it's worth a hundred dollars to them. Yeah. And it just takes a few more times and a few more pieces of content and ways to, to, to capture them. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, a, I think it's a great episode. I think it's super helpful for all of you, small businesses, social media managers, everyone. Yep. So that's our, that's our episode on ROI. I hope this was helpful for you guys. A really quick episode, probably the shortest episode we've put out in a while. All of the other ones have been like 45 minutes plus. This is one so, of those car ride with car yeah, ride quick, commute ones. Quick episode. Listen to it while you're making content or whatever the hell you guys are doing. And we will talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.